There has been an increasing concern in the 2A community regarding recent actions taken by the ATF to hunt down those who had purchased a force reset trigger or FRT from rare breed triggers. Although there are other companies that manufacture similar FRT type triggers, our discussion today is going to focus on the FRT-15 manufactured by Rare Breed Triggers, as that is the one ATF appears to be zeroing in on at this time. Now, that doesn't mean ATF won't come after you if you possess another brand of an FRT. We have been getting a steady stream of calls from people who have seen the post on social media about ATF coming after others. So in this video, we are going to talk about FRTs, what to do if you are contacted by ATF, or if a ATF comes knocking with the search warrant. Hello everyone, I'm James Phillips, one of the attorneys with the Firearm Firm channel. Before we start discussing the concerning direction which ATF appears to be heading, please take a second and show us some love and support by clicking the like and the subscribe button below. Let's begin with the basic. What is the FRT-15 by Rare Breed Triggers and what does it do? FRT stands for Force Reset Trigger and the FRT-15 was designed to replace the factory trigger in the popular AR-15 platform. In the simplest terms, the FRT-15 increases the rate of fire of a firearm by resetting the trigger using the force of the hammer after a round has been expelled. For a more detailed explanation and illustration of how the FRT-15 functions in a firearm, click the link provided below. Although the FRT-15 does increase the rate of fire, it does not allow more than one round to be expelled by a single squeeze of the trigger. That is important and you'll understand why in a moment. In March of 2022, ATF's Assistant Director of Enforcement released an open letter that was sent to all FFLs informing them that the ATF had recently evaluated several FRTs and had determined that some of them fall under the definition of a machine gun. Now, this letter did not specify which FRTs had been determined to be machine guns, but many in the 2A community already knew that ATF had decided the FRT-15 by rare breed triggers was in fact a machine gun. How? Well, because ATF had sent a cease and desist letter to rare breed triggers regarding the production and sale of their FRT-15 back in July of 2021. Rare Breed Triggers did immediately fight back after receiving the cease and desist letter by filing a lawsuit against ATF in federal court. However, that lawsuit was ultimately dismissed by the court. Under federal law, the term machine gun means any weapon which shoots, is designed to shoot, or can be rarely restored to shoot automatically more than one shot without manual reloading by a single function of the trigger. The term shall also include the frame or receiver of any such weapon, any part designed and intended solely and exclusively, or a combination of parts designed and intended for use in converting a weapon into a machine gun, and any combination of parts from which a machine gun can be assembled if such parts are in the possession or under the control of a person. You are probably thinking, wait a minute James, if the FRT-15 only allows one round to be expelled by a single squeeze of a trigger, how can ATF say it's a machine gun? Yeah, no clue. The only answer I can possibly come up with to that question is because ATF says so. Now, I don't know what is more dangerous, the fact that ATF can make such a ludicrous interpretation of clearly written laws, or ATF deciding for themselves that they have the power to change laws to fit their own agendas like they did last week with ATF 2021-R-05. Either way, it is definitely time for the judicial branch to step in and put those tyrants at the ATF in their place. When ATF first had this epiphany that some FRTs, including the FRT-15, are machine guns, they focused their attention on FFLs, rare breed triggers themselves, and other companies that sold FRTs. But now, they have turned their attention to those individuals who had legally purchased the FRT-15. So, are you on ATF's radar? I don't know, but if you are in possession of an FRT-15 or any other similar trigger, you should know what to do if you do appear on ATF's radar. So, with that said, let's get down to it. If you become a target of an ATF investigation, you are likely going to find yourself in one of the two following situations. The first situation is where ATF has tried to make contact with you by letter, 
phone, or by having an agent leave his or her business card at your residence when they attempted to contact you, but no one was home, or in some instances, you decide not to answer the door. They may have provided information about what they wanted to talk to you about, or they may have just asked you to call them. Even though you might be tempted to contact them to find out what they want, don't contact them. And definitely don't contact them if they told you they needed to talk to you about an FRT you previously purchased. It is so important for you to, to understand that if the ATF wants to talk to you, 99.9999% of the time, it is because they are investigating a crime and believe that you are connected to it somehow. I also want to be clear with you that if you just ignore the ATF, they are not going to go away. They will continue to try to make contact with you and they absolutely have no problem just showing up at your job, which of course never looks good in front of the, your boss. So, how do you stop the ATF from harassing you? It's real easy. You call a lawyer who has experience dealing with the ATF. Now, I get it. You might not be as excited about hiring a lawyer to represent you as I am when I'm retained by someone to represent them, but I assure you it is in your absolute best interest to have an attorney deal with the ATF on your behalf. I repeat, do not speak or contact the ATF without having a lawyer on your side. Even if you believe or know you've done nothing wrong, don't make the mistake of talking to them alone. The second and most stressful situation you may find yourself in is when the ATF unexpectedly shows up at your house and you answer the door. When this happens, most people are caught off guard and feel pressure to speak to them. Of course, that's probably why you're watching this video so you will know what to do if this does happen to you. It's simple, shut up and lawyer up. With that said though, be polite to the agents and let them know you are more than happy to cooperate with them, but be firm in letting them know you will not speak to them without having your attorney present. In other words, invoke your right to remain silent and your right to an attorney and invoke these rights unequivocally. Don't let the agents trick you into talking to them. Remember, they are there to do their job and looking out for your best interest is not part of it. Most importantly, besides shutting up and lawyering up, never, never, never give them consent to search you or any of your property, especially your gun safe. Remember, without a warrant or any other exception to the warrant requirement, the ATF cannot search you or your property unless you voluntarily consent to it. If ATF comes knocking with a warrant to search your home, there is nothing you can do to stop them, and you should not try you will never win that fight on the scene. The time to fight over whether or not they have the legal authority to search is not when the warrant is being executed, it is later down the road in court. However, you should ask to see the warrant and let them execute it without any resistance. Now, that does not mean you have to help them execute it. It just means you can't interfere with this execution. During this time, they are probably going to attempt to talk to you about what's going on. And like I said before, invoke your right to remain silent and your right to an attorney. At some point during the execution of the warrant, they will likely ask you to open your gun safe. What should you do? Before I tell you the answer to that, just know they are going to get into that safe one way or another if the warrant allows them to search it, which of course means they're going to destroy your safe. And no, the AATF will not pay for the damage they cause to your very expensive gun safe. The law does not require you to open the safe or provide them the combination or key to do it. For the most part, I usually recommend opening the safe to most people, but only under the following condition. Tell them that you are not voluntarily consenting to opening the gun safe, but instead you are merely acquiescing to their authority and to the authority of the search warrant. Stress to them that you would never ever allow them to search your gun safe or any of your property if it wasn't for the fact that they have a warrant. Finally, always record your interactions with the ATF or any other law enforcement agency. That way your statements and actions will be preserved. Now, I hope you never find yourself the target of an ATO investigation, but if you do, always remember to stay calm, shut up, and lawyer up. The last thing I want to discuss is what you should do if you currently possess the FRT-15. 
There are several videos circulating the internet telling people various things that they can do with their FRTs. Some people suggest destroying them, some say throw them in the trash, and some even suggest turning it into the ATF, which by the way, I usually do not recommend. However, I personally do not like giving out blanket legal advice because not everyone is faced with the same circumstances. I know many of you may not like what I'm about to say, but I truly feel the best legal advice I can give to everyone who's watching this video without knowing everyone's circumstances is to call an experienced firearms attorney you can trust. I'm not saying this to get you to call my firm and attempt to get clients. I am telling you this because it is in your best interest to get exceptional legal advice from an attorney that you trust and not just from watching a video produced by an attorney. I hope all of you have enjoyed watching this video. If so, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button below. Also for all my Floridians watching, this video, I will be releasing another video this Wednesday about whether or not you have to worry about a state law enforcement agency on top of the feds coming for you because you previously purchased a FRT-15 or similar trigger. Until next time, stay armed and educated.